Okay, so here we are. Um, I did a solution for projectile motion with linear drag, and I, and I solved the equation of motion. I actually have these two equations of motions. And the nice thing about this is that if you have linear drag, then you can still separate it into an x motion and a y motion that are independent except for time. Uh, because the x component of velocity right here only affects the x velocity. And so for, the same thing is true for the y. So really, it's just two problems. This is the one-dimensional linear drag for uh, an object falling with gravity. And this is the one-dimensional linear drag for no gravity. Uh, the only thing I need to do is find the initial velocities and so forth like that. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use these two equations uh, and, and plot this. And then I'll, I'll make a comparison with it uh, numerically because that's what I do. Okay, so let's switch over to Trinket. And in fact, if I don't put this, I'm, I'm going to forget those equations. Let's see if I can put them up over here. Uh, there, right there. Okay. So the first thing I can do is make a, uh, oh, I'm, I didn't even open this up. Okay, new trinket. Wait, yep. Nope, new trinket. Glow script, Python. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is make a graph. So T graph equals G curve, I mean graph. Uh, X title. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be plotting uh, X and Y versus time. That's the first thing I want to do. So X title equals time seconds. Y title. Let's just call this the generic position equals position in meters. And then I'm gonna say the FX is G curve. Color equals color dot blue. Oops, and then FY equals G curve, color equals color dot red. Okay, now let's set up my initial condition. So let's say V0 equals 10, uh, theta equals, uh, let's say 45 degrees is for fun. So 45 times pi divided by 180. Uh, the mass I'm gonna say is one, uh, and B equals 0.5. I, I, I had one before. I'm just changing that to 0.5. We can change that up. It's not a big deal. Um, I think I'm good. Let's see. So let's put uh, Vx0 equals V0. Oops, sorry. V0 times the cosine of theta. Vy0 equals V0 times sine of theta. I do need t equals 0, dt equals 0 0.1. It doesn't really matter. I'm not really doing a numerical calculation, so I don't need to break this up into something super small. And let's do, oh, I need y and x too. So x0 zero equals 0, y0 zero equals 0. Oh, g, g equals 9.8, arg. Oh, I need to calculate the terminal velocity too. Uh, Vt is going to be equal to, I left this out, it's negative m times g divided by b. Is that correct? I'm pretty sure that is correct. And I did use a negative sign there. I'm, I'm almost positive that's correct. Um, if it messes up, I'll just, I don't know, pretend like it didn't mess up. Okay, uh, I think maybe we're ready. So let's do while y I need to do that too. Let's do y equals y0, x equals x0. That's my starting thing. Now, so I'm gonna say y while while what it's it's a tongue twister. While y is greater than or equal to zero, so it's above the ground. Uh, the first thing I can do is to calculate uh, the y coordinate and then the x coordinate. The, I'm just gonna enter in these two functions right here. That's all I'm doing right now. Okay, so. Uh, y is going to equal to y0, I'm just typing it in, plus vt times t, oops, times t, plus exponential negative b times t divided by m, minus 1, times vt times m over b, minus vy0 times m over b. 
Now I need to do the x, x equals x0 plus vx0. I did call it that right, yep. vx0 times m divided by b, that's in parentheses, times uh, one minus exponential negative b times t divided by m. Um, now I can plot both of those, so I'm gonna say, let's just scroll up here. fx dot plot, it's gonna be t and x. fy dot plot, it's gonna be t and y. Now I need to increase t, t equals t plus dt. This is just, just so I can make a new graph. Um, if I want to plot versus time, I need to update time. And I think that's it. Let's just let's just see. I have a feeling that something bad happened. Let's see. Linear drag plot trajectory. Okay, are you ready for this? Let's do it. What? I think it worked. Yeah, so Y comes up and back down, and then X keeps going up, but it does slow down. That, I like that. I like that a lot. Let's increase the drag to uh, 1 and rerun it, because I think I want to I want to look more air draggy. Let's, let's, increase, let's decrease the mass to 0.5. But I think it's working. Yeah. Okay. Now you do see a little uh, bumps there. That's just, but that's okay, right? Because uh, it's still the correct value. Now the question is, how far does it go? Well, if you look right here, uh, right there is where it gets back down to zero. And if I go up to here, I can get that same value, or I can also print it out the final. And let's just actually, I think if I make this higher resolution uh, time step, then I, I actually won't go over the. The final position. So let's say print um, x equals x meters. And let's also print out the time. Okay. That way we'll get the range. Cool. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, okay. Uh, the range equation. We've already, you know, we can do this. Here's what we do. What if I make the uh, the the drag parameter zero? Okay. Let's just run this. And I'm not even going to check because I think it's working. Oh. Uh, hmm. X is nothing. Oh, because I'm dividing by B. Okay. So I look at my equation right here. The problem is that I have this. Uh, parameter right there. Um, so I'd need to rework this whole thing. But if b is uh, 0, this should just be v times t. Uh, okay, well, let's put this at 0 0.001. How about that? Okay, ha! <laughs> tricked it. So now you see I do get um, normal projectile motion. Uh, that's a, a parabola and that's a straight line. You could check this with the range equation, but I'm pretty sure it's legit. Okay, now what we want to do is to, I want to repeat this whole thing, uh, but do it numerically. Okay, so let's make one more graph. Um, I'm just going to, uh, let's make this FY, uh, F, FY uh, N for numerical equals uh, G curve uh, color green. And I won't plot the other one. Now I need to do this same motion, but I'm going to do it using forces. So I'm going to have to have an object. I'm going to need a position. I'm going to do this all with vectors. Okay. So let's just start off with things like this. R equals vector. And I could do this visually, but I'm not going to. So it has a, that's the initial vector position. Now I need the vector velocity. Let's see. Do I have a V? No. I can use V. So let's say v equals vector, uh, actually I'll put it over here, v0 times the vector uh, cosine theta, sine theta, 0. Uh, I do need to reset time. I'm just going to go back and put t equals 0, uh, dt, uh, I'll leave dt at 0 0.01. Let's see if it works. Uh, I do need now a better gravitational 
uh, field because I need g as a vector. So I'm going to say g equals vector 0, negative 9.8, 0. Now, this is a bad programming idea right there because you notice up here I have g equals 9.8 as a scalar and here I have g as a vector and that's not a good idea. But I'm going to do it anyway because that's the way I like to live dangerously uh, and a little outside the law, you know, because sometimes you just got to do that. It worked, trust me. Um, okay, now I do I do still have the mass. I'm going to use momentum principle here. So I'm going to say P equals M times V. Uh, and I think I am ready. So let's say while R dot Y is greater than or equal to zero, just like before, um, now I'm going to calculate the net force. So I'm going to say F equals M times G. Now G is a vector. Right, so that can do that. Uh, minus b times v. So you'll notice here that this is also a vector. Okay, so I it, it the whole thing works just fine right there, and I get a force as a vector. So now I need to update the momentum. P equals p plus p plus f times dt. I need to update the position. R equals r plus p times dt divided by m where P over M is the momentum. And then I'm going to plot it. So F Y N dot plot T and the R position. So it's going to be R dot Y, the Y position. And then update time, T equals T plus DT. Um, and let's put this back to normal B. Where's my B? There, I'm going to just make it at one. Okay, you ready? Oh, that didn't work. Maybe I need a smaller time step. Let's just make it super small. Huh. Wow, that's weird. Okay, checking stuff here. V equals V0. Um, G, P, negative BV. Plus. Hmm. Why am I getting such different values? Well, let's try putting the um, let's try putting the uh, the the imp the this back down to some super small number times uh, point zero 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 one. Okay. That looks like they're t in they're working together now. Okay. So this means that there is an error somewhere. My guess is this is in the error right here, one of these two equations. Um, hmm. Okay, well I will stop there and I'll figure this out later. Okay, I'm back, I fixed it. Uh, so <laughs> I've made this mistake before. So here's my mistake. Down here, I updated momentum, but the force depends on the velocity, and I never updated the velocity. I just forgot about that. So if I add this line in right here, where I, after I update the momentum, I recalculate the velocity, then it works. So you see here, the two lines are on top of each other. I print out the final position the same. Uh, everything's working. So the end, and I fixed it. So I'm pretty happy. Um, yeah. Cool. The end.